Hi there folks, Tower Tech here, welcome back to the channel. I've stayed quite quiet on the subject of all things Threadripper and i9 related. I have been watching the space with interest. And there's a bit of a health warning to this video, there are going to be some relatively strong opinions in it, and I may or may not be saying slightly disparaging things about both AMD and Intel. So you have been warned, if you don't enjoy the video then feel free to leave uh, your thoughts on that down in the comments below, but I am going to express my unbiased opinion of this lineup, and that is that ultimately I think they're both really confused and really muddled about what they're trying to achieve. They're both clearly targeting content creators with high core counts and 11 billion threads it would seem available on both platform. But what they've fundamentally failed to understand is the kind of workloads that are gonna be running on these platforms, the kind of workloads that a content creator is gonna be using and the kind of bang for buck that they're likely to get off of these chips. Now, Cinebench and stuff like that, synthetic bank benchmarking tools are great, but they don't really give a perspective on one chip to another relative performance when you're using, say, Premiere Pro or After Effects or something like that. And fundamentally, these, these applications are not currently optimized to use 16 cores as it would be on the new Threadripper lineup with 32 threads available, or indeed 18 cores at the high end of the i9, albeit that that's not currently released, you can only get the, the 10 core variant at the moment. And basically, what you're gonna find in Premiere Pro is if you're editing in 4K workloads, then anything between eight and 10 cores is probably gonna be your sweet spot. And if you're rendering in 1080p, which is what the majority of content creators are doing, then actually a six core variant is gonna be your sweet spot. The law of diminishing returns suggests that the more cores that you start to put against these workloads will actually give you less benefit in the long run, and actually from a bang for buck perspective, you end up with a very, very poor proposition altogether. I actually think there are some other features that are much more important, particularly when you're editing in 4K. Those are the, uh, the rate of IOPS or input outputs for your SSD or better yet your NVMe drive, and indeed the amount of RAM that you've got available. Both of these applications, Premiere Pro and After Effects, are very memory hungry applications. And quite often I see people that have got, you know, eight cores, 10 cores, 20 threads with 16 gigs worth of RAM, which doesn't make a whole heap of sense. You're actually going to start to starve your CPU. So my recommendation would probably be to give both of these lineups a miss if you've got something relatively current, by that I mean anything in the X99 platform in the last 12 to 18 months, and certainly if you're a Ryzen 7 uh, or a Ryzen 5 uh, customer, then you've got yourself a very, very good value proposition there together. The range ups really are a mess. Intel really fundamentally doesn't seem to have learned the lessons on a pricing perspective. How on earth you think that you can market a $2,000 CPU, even to the enthusiast community, just beggars belief. I think AMD's price proposition looks pretty compelling, and I have to say there are some things about Threadripper that I really like the look of. 64 PCIe lanes looks fab, particularly with boards that have got two or three NVMe SSD slots in them. You can start to think about doing striping arrays and really get those IOPS in when you've got a timeline that's got lots of clips layered on top of each other. The rate at which it needs to access that drive and pull that information back is pretty phenomenal so having all of those PCI lane i.e. all of those PCIe lanes really really helps with that. I also think that the memory proposition for Threadripper looks really fab as well. You can have up to a terabyte, a terabyte of RAM. Imagine what you could be doing with that. But I do have to challenge the notion that what it fundamentally feels like AMD have done is stuck two Ryzen 7 CPUs together uh, to create their 16 core beast. There's some clever stitching type technology that they've uh, they've used, but I definitely keep an eye out, as I said on my somewhat controversial Ryzen 7 video, do wait, keep your powder dry, wait for the reviews and wait for the benchmarks. 
there are a plethora of reports available on the internet about the issues that you're likely to encounter if you have a multi-CPU system. Plenty of people using Xeon CPUs, dual CPU boards that actually see degraded performance against less cores on single chips. So arguably if AMD have stuck two chips together, is the system going to treat those as two separate CPUs rather than one large multi-CPU system? So it will be interesting to see how people respond to this video. Uh, I do genuinely value your, your thoughts, so please contribute those down in the comments below. I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are. Please like and share this video, and I'll see you in my next one.